everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Welcome back to the member section of YouTube where we're going to be continuing on with the poker clone code that we finished off last uh, last time. And uh, we basically, last episode, we got all of the enemies spawning in. Today, we're going to be looking at getting the player information spawned in. And that way, we can then move on to fixing the rest of the camera changes to then also starting to actually produce some code we also need to create our battle widget where we're going to be doing most of our choices and things from so let's get this done and then we can sort of go and explore into some other avenues uh this will be a very short uh episode so hopefully um you know it won't be long until you can actually get into some proper stuff so let's stop uh waffling and let's get into some actual uh, information so we, we're going to need some functions so we're going to set up player trainer dialog now remember a lot of this comes down to the split between host and joiner um so you have your player which is your host and your enemy which is your joiner that, that's how they combine together just in case you're wondering for down the line uh we're going to be spawn our player ringmon uh, Pokemon. Force of habit, I apologize. <laughs> uh, Pokemon, there we go. And uh, then we'll also want um, party Pokemon dialogue. So, uh, go, so-and-so, you know, so-and-so spawned, you know, whatever, right? That's, that's kind of what that is. Uh, back in the event graph, We'll give ourselves a, uh, we'll need to add in a delay and then we're going to create our um, character. So let's put these in order. So we spawn our enemy. We then turn to our player. So the first thing we're going to do is put in a switch there. We're going to go into our player and we're going to turn to that uh, player camera. So you should hopefully be able to see the order. We turn to our player camera. Uh, let's call him Ricardo. Ricardo sends out this, you know, um, or uh, you'd have um, go so and so. You know, that's what we're looking for from here. It's that it's the player choice. The first one is um, so and so wants to battle. They send out blank, you know, and then we spawn it in, and then we say okay. Uh, or with this one, I suppose with this one, actually, you go so and so wants to battle, spawn in their creature, go so and so, and then we switch the camera to their spawn enemy, right? That's how that one works out. For the player trainer, we are just doing go so and so, and then we spawn in that, that enemy, right? Uh, so you could almost probably get rid of the player trainer dialogue and um, just spawn in the, the party creature and then go to the trainer saying go go blah 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 you you pick your own order right uh change it up for your own game um but i'm just giving you the essential tools and layout to produce your own game uh, i always like to wait around about 1.5 seconds um to give a chance to actually see the spawning party same for here i did two here but you could do 1.5 as well for this one um and then after that, we just need to create a widget, which we haven't got set up yet, but we'll we'll plug something in for now. And we're going to make a reference to this. So we're going to promote this to a variable. It's going to be important down the line for amending things uh, here and there, like health bars and all that sort of stuff. It's going to be very important. Uh, also for removing widgets from the screen. Um, and we'll call this battle widge, widget ref. Uh, and then from that, we just want to add to viewport. Now, this is going to freak out because we don't have anything plugged in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go to our third person character. We are going to um, create a new folder, which is going to house all our widgets. So we'll call this widgets. And we're just going to create one. Uh, go to user interface, widget blueprint, user widget. And we'll call this uh, battle widget like so and we're going to just plug that in here to, to get rid of the the error here for now 
Uh, and the last two things, well, the last few things we need to do is we just need to go into each one of these and uh, decide what we want to do. Uh, so we've already done the player trainer. We're just going to switch to the player camera very quickly. Uh, you probably won't even see it. It's going to be that fast for now. <laughs> but eventually, hopefully, we'll have uh, a little bit of a segue in between the two. Then we are going to spawn our creature or our Pokemon. And um, this is going to be very similar to our enemy um, team or, our, you know, how we set that up. Um, but what we need to do is we actually need to take our enemy team variable that's in the enemy variables and we will, we're going to duplicate it and we're going to call this player team. And we're going to set that into a new category called uh, player variables. Uh, that way we can split them out and find them a lot easier. We're also going to duplicate the uh, current uh, ooh, the current player index. Um, so we're going to duplicate that one. And we're also going to um, put that under player variables so that they have their own setups. Now, if we close some of this down, we should find the spawn enemy uh, function we created. We're going to just actually copy and paste this. It's exactly the same code. It's just we need to change a few things. So the first thing we're going to change is we're going to get the player spawn BP. Uh, this will cause some errors immediately, like the get. So we're just going to get a new get. Oh, um, we're going to get a new get, get a copy. And we're just going to plug that into there. Because again, this will be the only one in the world uh, spawned for our, for our player. So we can do that. And the next thing we want to do is we want to swap this for the player team as opposed to the enemy team. Uh, and then... We can keep all the rest of this stuff pretty much the same. The only thing we also have to change is our current player index. Change that one. And we will remove these set. And we're going to promote this to a new variable. And you probably already guessed it. We're going to call this player uh, Pokemon. And put that under the category of player variables. Plug this down in the bottom as well. So that we uh, always have that being set. And in theory, we should be good to go, as long as I haven't made any mistakes. The only thing we will need to do is we need to go back into our third-person character, and we need to now plug in that player team, which is going to be our player team. So we can just do trainer Pokemon, get that, and break it, like so. And we're just going to plug that trainer party straight in. We can get rid of the storage boxes if you want to, just to tidy things up. Um, but that's that's kind of all we need to do for that. Because we're always going to take our own trainer team. We don't need to take uh, it from anywhere else. It's always going to be on our third-person character, so we can plug that straight in. And um, if we go back to the third-person party, because we obviously have that exposed, that gets brought into our BP, just like the enemy team does, and we can start using those variables to determine stuff. So that's what we need to do to spawn our player in. And the last thing is the party pilot, uh, the party Pokemon dialogue. Uh, I've just realized I put this in the wrong. <laughs> I put it in the wrong one. My apologies. Let's uh, let's tidy this up. Put it into the correct function. Do not mistake in the function that you want to have. Do what you want to do. So we can now delete that out of here. And all we're going to do in here for now is um, not get switch out that camera uh, for our uh, for the party camera. That's exactly what we wanted. I just want to make sure I did put the right one in the other one. Uh, player camera. Yep, that's fine. Party camera is fine. Uh, yeah, great. So realistically, now what we should happen is we should uh, end up on the over camera so put a camera switch here as well after the delay to make sure it goes to the overview camera um oh and plug that in and compile and if we press play now and start a fight hopefully fingers crossed a we should be able to see the overworld and b we should um we'll call him dave because dave's the man 
And um, we should, in theory, be taken over there, and both Pokemon should be spawned in, uh, hopefully. Fingers crossed. I'm hoping so. There's one, and there's the other. Hey, there we go. It didn't change the cameras. So, well, uh, that's because they're not set up. So the party cameras are not set up. Neither is the enemy cameras. We'll do that in the next episode. But we have our Pokemon and their Pokemon spawned in. It's just the cameras that need fixing, but you should, you, you know, in theory, we'd have it all working as expected. So, um, yeah, hopefully you found this episode very useful and the last episode very useful in terms of getting everything into the battle world. Uh, the only thing now we need to do is set up a widget and get things moving and, and attacking, etc. So, yeah, thank you so much, guys, for watching. And uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.